go versus Rust versus Bun versus Node, a simple HTTP benchmark. Okay, let's start with let's start with the why. Well, it looks like there's actually a bunch of stuff before the why. The the table of contents is missing the, the I guess the foreplay. All right, the pre-why. Recently, Bun 1.0 was released, which shows promise as a tool for serving many users without using too many resources. To evaluate its performance, a simple benchmark test was created to measure the number of HTTP calls the server could handle per second. The benchmark also compares Bun with Go, Rust, and Node, as these languages are frequently compared in other benchmarks using similar purposes. Okay, the benchmark test, by the way, I have a very hot, hot take, but I refuse to give it right now, but this take is going to be a scalding hot. Scalding. Okay, so get ready for the scalder. Uh, the benchmark uh, test was a, a run both locally and on a Linode server. I love, okay, good. I love to see this. I love the Linode server take uh, with two dedicated CPU cores with four gigabytes of RAM running Debian 11 on Linode. All four tests were compiled uh, and run using the following commands. All right, run, build, minify, Index, out file, benchmark. Okay, good. And then run the benchmark. Cargo, build, target, rust. Okay, go, build. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Uh, node, benchmark. Okay. The tests were run on the following runtime versions. A rust, uh, 174. Okay, 121. 1 and 2006. Okay, so the latest environments. This is good. Because the difference between node 18 and node 20, there's actually quite a few performance improvements. All right, to benchmark each, uh, and it's, it's to do with V8 more than anything else. To benchmark test each runtime, Go, uh, Rust, Go, Node, and Bun were built uh, for production usage, and the same test was uh, run for each language. The test was connected with 100 concurrent connections running for one minute, and all of the runtime ut uh, utilized multi-threading. Okay, so here's my real question. Did this person, whoever wrote this, uh, Emil, did you run it from your computer or a series of one or more computers in Linode? That's my first question right away, because... If you're running it from your own machine, even as the test client, I mean, it's not as good of a test if you aren't running from your own machine. You know what I mean? It's always better to run from your own machine. I mean, run from not your own machine. Not. Not. Let's see. The HTTP tests were running using this uh, right here. Okay, WG work. Uh, all the languages use built-in HTTP servers except for Rust, which uses Axum and Tokyo because Rust doesn't come with the built-in HTTP server. Fair. It has a TCP server, but not an HTTP server. Uh, the, uh, let's see. The source code for these can be found here. Okay. Why? Before I show you the results, I'd like to explain why I conducted this test, mainly out of curiosity. I wanted to see if there is a JS runtime that can perform almost as fast as Rust or Go. I'm not a huge fan of JS in general, mainly because I don't enjoy writing the language. That's perfectly valid, but I also feel that uh, there hasn't been a JS runtime that is good enough. The JS world got Dino a while ago, which seems a bit faster, but still not good enough. Okay, okay, again, my scalding hot take is boiling inside of me. It's, it's trying to come out. I'm not letting it come out. In the real world, the bottlenecks in your system probably would uh, probably not be the runtime. It would probably be something else, such as your database or ingress, etc. Uh, we, uh, we can see this if we look at the results of running the test in the cloud. This type of test may not be the best, but it still provides a good indication of Bun's performance compared to others. With this, we are now at the runtime that we could have a good choice uh, when building businesses. Okay, there's probably a better way to conduct this type of test, probably by running a WebSocket with numerous clients listening to the uh, socket to determine which uh, running performs the best. However, this is a test for another time. I don't really get this end part, but it's good that he recognizes that this isn't necessarily a great test and that in the real world, your bottlenecks aren't usually what's being tested right now, right? Fair. All right, in the test locally. All right. Uh, first, Rust. Okay, latency, this thing. Uh, obviously, this none of this really matters right here. Request a second. Okay, we got 8.87K request a second. We did this many requests in 30 seconds. Uh, this much. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Then Go. Go also looking pretty girthed, pretty girthy. Uh, a little bit different, though. Look at that, a little bit different. About the same amount. Less megabytes read. Request per second, not as good. Then Bun, not as good as Go, as you can see right here. Okay, and then Node, uh, Node came in. You know that meme. You know the meme where it's like, the. I don't even want to say the meme. It's gonna get me. It's gonna get me canceled. Okay, you know Node tried. Okay, Node tried. Dude, you haven't seen URL parser. Does it have the Ada parser? Does it have the Ada parser in it? Because if it had the Ada parser, it'd probably be ten times faster. Honestly. 
10 times faster. When running a test locally, we see that Rust serves more requests per second compared to the other options. Okay, yeah, that's probably not too surprising. I don't think anyone's necessarily surprised by this. Um, yeah, I mean, the differences should be fairly minimal between these frameworks. I'm actually surprised it's this bad. Honestly, I'm actually surprised it is this bad that the difference between bun and say Rust or bun and go is that far off because like the reality is garbage collection happens in C++. HTTP processing and everything happens in C++. Every part of this is C++. So why is it this much different? I mean, Bun's obviously Zig instead of C++, and Go is Go or whatever, whatever, however they work. And Rust is, I think Rust, Rust writes Rust itself. But either way, it just breaks down to, you know, a, a series of syscalls. I can't imagine that one's better than the other somehow. That's why it's just so surprising that I'm seeing this. All right. Testing locally. Uh, it's time to speed, uh, let's see, it's time, it, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. It is time to test the speed of each runtime in serializing and returning simple JSON strings. Uh, the task is to serialize a simple JSON struct and return it. Okay, so this is actually a better test because really what you're going to see, so I hope the longevity of the test is there. You really do need to run this over the course of a couple minutes, which is you want to see garbage collection. Let's begin with Rust. And there's another thing that I'm going to talk about here shortly uh, with this test. Rust Okay, so somehow it is somehow, let's see, 423, 423, it is pretty much the same speed, right? Nothing about it is much different. Not too surprising. Very little work's actually going. Go, pretty much the same speed. Bun, drastic fall down. That's actually a bit surprising that Bun suffered that much from a JSON stringify locally. Now, obviously, there could be a lot of questions. What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. But nonetheless, I'm surprised it suffered that hard from JSON stringifying effectively a constant right because if you remember the other one uh you know the other one is about 10 percent faster and node nodes about the same right if you look right here node didn't change node changed like rust didn't change right it's effectively the same thing okay so that's interesting to me it says maybe there's something going on with bun and bun doesn't have a good json whatever uh Let's see, I thought they would have pulled uh, that into native Zig or something. JSON is so core to JavaScript. Well, no, it should be. It's it's within the JavaScript engine. It wouldn't be in Zig. It'd be within the JavaScript engine. It'd be within um, uh, JavaScript core. That's Safari. So maybe the Safari implementation of of uh, JSON dot stringify or JSON dot parse isn't quite there. Read Pravon's message. Um, Pravon, say your message to my face right now. I can just shortcut it. Honestly, I can just shortcut it. Oh, hold up. That's my article. Roasting me? Let's go! Getting roasted. Get roasted, kid. Okay, so I'm actually more surprised by how much Bun faltered because Go didn't change. Rust didn't change. Node didn't change. Bun really changed. That's Okay, that's a bit surprising. That's something to investigate. That's kind of interesting. Running the, uh, the test in the cloud. It's time to run the same test in the cloud. By the way, Pravon, I really love that you put it also up in Linode. And you do like a cloud test. I think that that's very good. Uh, this time I have spun up a server with a dedicated CPU in Stockholm. Oh, you're having a little bit of Stockholm syndrome, as they call it. To avoid limitations, I am running the benchmark from my local computer to the server. Okay, so that can be a little bit. I'm a little worried about that, but okay. Uh, if I were to run a client server within Linode, I would uh, be limited to choosing only two dedicated CPUs without creating a support ticket. Additionally, my local computer has more cores and internet connection that is good enough for the test. Fine. Well, at least they're all running the same thing. I've also increased the number of connections to the server in order to achieve better results. Okay. Test. Uh, testing returning only a simple string. Is this the JSON one? I assume this is like the, or this is just the simple string. All right. So Rust, obviously a huge downgrade. This all makes perfect sense. If you think about it, I'm a little worried about the connection uh, and all these things just because this is where you know, I see things just fall apart, especially locally. Usually whenever I do something that has a lot of connections, I I tend to break it onto several machines, uh, all in the cloud, but I get the idea. It's looking good. Okay. Go. Yep, this makes sense. Bun. All right. Bun is now sitting equal with Rust. What this tells me is that I did you did you run SAR by any chance and just like see the network utilization and the and the server utilization and all that here? DDoS your own server? Absolutely, in the name of science. 
Because I'd be curious, what's the running speed? I have that VMRSS script as well to see how much memory things are taking up. Yeah, no, I saw, I saw, I saw the link to it. But I was just wondering if you ran any of the SAR stuff to look at how much uh, CPU is actually being taken. And finally, Node. Node again. Are, can we all get an RIP Node? I feel bad for Node. Node just always coming in. All right, testing of JSON. So this will be interesting. So Rust, again, pretty much same speed, right? 713, 718. Yeah, uh, maybe a 1% difference. Go, same thing. Uh, wait, does, did, Go, did Go get faster? Somehow Go got faster, again, Maybe not long enough test. I mean, this is so this would be one of the problems with this type of test, right? You got to let it run for a while, usually, kind of isolate any of these weird issues. So, go somehow got faster. Doubt, right? Hashtag doubt. Um, Bun, Bun's still doing great somehow. Bun is pretty much identical to Rust in this situation. And finally, Node is like this. I'd love to see some profiling. Are you actually using the CPU? Summary, it's excited to see uh, that Bun performs so well and seems to be a runtime that can compete with Rust or Go for HTTP. I'm also thrilled that there's a runtime that does it all. Unlike languages such as Rust and Go, which provide package managers, Bun provide one as well. Yes. Node, on the other hand, has various package managers. It has various everythings for everythings, and all the things have everythings. It's very it's a pain in the ass to get started. Uh, and many different ways of achieving the same thing, where each method is faster than the others. Yep. Although I'm not a big fan of writing JavaScript in general, I look forward to building something with Bun. I would love to receive feedback. This is great. So I think this is really great. Hey, go follow. Go follow! Pravan on Twitter, okay? It's right here. But, uh, all right, so here's my, here's my hot, steaming hot thing about this, which is I don't find these type of tests interesting because it doesn't really test the environment well. Uh, the, the, the JSON one kind of did. But here's the deal, is that there's a lot of these things that happen, right? There's a lot of ways that uh, these companies, ha- or companies, these, well, I mean, technically, Bun's a company as well. But uh, there's a lot of ways these, these languages handle how, do, how does it do garbage collection. And so when you write an endpoint, you typically get some data. You do like an await. It goes off to a database. It comes back. You do maybe another await. You go to some other thing. Maybe you wait for a couple different awaits. And these things can take a little bit of time, Right. And then you get a response, and then you get your response back, and then you return it all out. And so what ends up happening is you have these objects that end up living longer and crossing the boundary of a collection and being promoted from nursery into something larger. And so therefore, you get a much more kind of complex operating or runtime experience, which means that your, your requests per second or whatever can go way down because you start to get all of the different uh, all the different facets of the language actually running. And so that's one of my worries whenever you see just a pure HTTP test is you're not really testing much other than what is the runtime doing. And I know that's the purpose of this article, but I like to see a little bit more like what does it actually offer? Does JS Core actually offer a compelling difference between V8? Or is it purely just how well did they write the system interface for with Zig? Right? Because let's just face it. Like you said, it's the least interesting part of the whole thing. It's great for your let's see. It's great if your server is fast, but it's not great if it's too easy to accidentally generate gigabytes of GC collected memory for no reason. Exactly, exactly. Like this is a real thing. This is why just last night when we were talking about it, we were reading something, or I forgot what we were doing last night. But it's all about letting Node die. It's okay that Node dies. It's hard, right? That's like the whole argument for why serverless is becoming popular with Node is that one of the arguments is that it's hard to make a Node server live for a long time, which really is kind of a crazy statement. If you really think about it, could you really say that that's like a great thing? Like that's a language or an environment you should be using is one in which you can't get to live for a long time? Node is not stable. The experience is not stable. And it's not that Node is not stable. It's that the language itself doesn't give you the constructs to avoid problems from happening. You probably just missed a try catch. You probably just actually did something you're not allowed to do. You just didn't realize you couldn't do that. You actually held on to memory in a closure that points to a map, and then it ended up exploding. It's really easy to do dumb stuff in JavaScript. And so I totally get that. And that's what always, you know... That's what worries me more about the language than anything else. I would love to see, I mean, because I'm seeing right now a bunch of OCaml being executed from Bun. So to me, that actually seems like a really compelling argument for Bun is that Bun has really great FFI. 
And so maybe, just maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe, just maybe. And so I, I like this idea. You know what I mean? You got to soak the testing. You got to do a deep soaking. You know what I mean? All right. Anyways, I think FFI is a great selling point. I agree. I'm on that team. I think the FFI is a great selling point, and I'd love to do more about that. Oh, wow. I really want to make middleware in, with OCaml. I can't wait to use a language level abstractions. Exactly. And so there's something really Dino will solve. <laughs> RIP. But really, like to me, this is really what makes it more compelling is that you have Bun to handle all the shitty parts about programming, right? JavaScript is actually a really great language for handling shitty parts of programming. We all agree that sometimes you don't want to handle every single type. You don't want to have to write all the structs. You don't want to have to have everything. Instead, you can kind of like reduce it. You know, you don't really want to do any of that. So you kind of handle the, the things that are shitty in JavaScript because it's super easy. And then you have your, your, your better language do all the complex parts. And so it's like, I could see why that is kind of exciting. JS is kind of great at working. It's it's kind of great at doing things, but it shoots you the foot, right? It's it's a Faustian bargain. Working with JavaScript is a continuous Faustian bargain. You you've missed error handling, you've missed some some typing you did not expect. Because the thing is, is that you have to define all the typing that could happen, right? Whereas it's like the inverse in a static language. A static language, you define what types are allowed to be. And that's that. The type system cannot pass if it doesn't work. Whereas with TypeScript, nothing, nothing, if, if you just get handed a, a string instead of a number and you didn't plan for that, it doesn't matter your tests, your code you've written. It just works. And that's what's going to happen, right? And you have, you're, you're doomed. You're doomed in a weird sense. And things are going to happen in a weird way you didn't expect it to happen because you have to know every possible type or you have to do the typeless programming where you enforce your types. Zod would be an example. And if you use Zod, your server is going to screech to a halt on how fast it could go. Kyle Simpson would disagree. I don't care what Kyle Simpson has to say. You have to know your types either way. You don't know what your third-party services are going to respond with. They can respond with things you don't expect because that's what happens. You have to expect everybody to play ball, right? And get, let's just face it. Not everyone's great at playing ball. Anyways. The name is, I really liked this article. It was pretty interesting, and I'm very excited about more of it. By the way, for those that don't know, I've, been, I've, been, I've teased it a few times. We're going, I'm going through some Bun versus Node.js performance. Tighter is better. Bun, super tight. 3 million, 3.2 million on what I want to see, and another 2.2 million on what I want to see. Exact code, exact everything. The difference is, is that the one I wanted to see only has 1.3 million and 1.4 million. Way better performance on Bun on identical code. Way tighter distribution. Lots of things I'm excited about. Can't wait to see it. That's very bright. Sorry for the flashbang. The name is the Primogen.